The Classic Tetris Monthly May 2021 Masters event was an incredible clash of new and old players and playstyles, including some major upsets, great reactions, and a surprise winner, which will all be broken down and analyzed in this month's recap. If you want to watch the original broadcasts, I'll have direct links to the main broadcast and the second stage broadcast from the two Twitch channels in the video description. So let's begin. The qualifying scores featured a stellar lineup of veterans and some new challengers, and in case scores ever look stagnant with the low 1 million range, a quick reminder that because of the average of two requirement now, it's much harder to fluke your way in. You don't just need one amazing score, you need two. This caused things to go down to the wire for Cheese, who got a nearly 1.1 million score early on in his session, but wasn't qualified for the Masters event until he squeaked across a max out in his final game. Notably, this was Cheese's first appearance in the Masters event after switching his playstyle entirely to rolling. And his match with Huffleupagus was so incredible that I actually made a whole video dedicated to it last month shortly after it happened. But after I put up the video, another player, Aaron M, reached out to me to let me know that Cheese and Huffleupagus were actually on a Discord call together during the match, and he sent me some audio from that call. No, dude! Oh, you should have tapped out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Cheese, stop. Don't do it. Don't get that Tetris. Jeez! I don't want to be in a scout clip. I don't want to be in a scout clip. <laughs> uh, whoops. <laughs> As it turns out though, there was another match in the round of 16 that was amazing as well, and will be the highlight. Fractal 161 versus Tetris Time. This is a really fantastic matchup. If you're not already familiar with Fractal 161, you will be soon. After coming within a single game of making the top eight at the 2020 World Championships, he's only gotten better, climbing all the way into the top 10 for the all-time score leaderboard and nabbing the number one seed this month with a fantastic 1.157 million average score. But perhaps the biggest contribution he's made to the scene recently has been organizing and hosting an amazing tournament this past week between some of the most cutting edge AIs playing NES Tetris. More on that in an upcoming video. Tetris Time, on the other hand, had to earn his spot by battling all the way through a tough challenger circuit. In games one and two, Fractal showed why he was the number one seed, winning emphatically with back-to-back -back max outs. But in games three and four, ill-timed hangs caused him to top out and for Tetris Time to claw his way back to a decider. In game five, both players brought their A game, setting the stage for an incredible finish, both on max out pace, on level 27, and separated by a mere 100 140 points. Fractal has a mountain in the center and creates a square overhang and has to burn a single, but Tetris Time also needs to burn and Fractal gets a Tetris to take the lead. Sets up more tucks, ends up burning to take away an overhang, and Tetris Time takes the lead back with a Tetris. Fractal is clean but only has one Tetris available until 29. Takes it as soon as it comes. Can't really get anything on 29, but the pressure's on Tetris Time now. He gets a Tetris but needs 4,000 points to win. A triple would do it, but he's going for the Tetris. Going all in, selling out his stack. If he gets droughted, it's GG's, but gets the long bar for a Tetris into 29. Tetris Time lives up to his name, completing the comeback with a reverse sweep and celebrates by jumping from the table he plays on and flopping down on his bed, taking a brief, well-earned rest. Although he went out to Miles in the next round, he had a memorable Masters event debut. And things continued to heat up in the top eight with Tristop versus Sidnev. This is also a really fantastic matchup. Tristop just recently got a 1.3 million score with Das, which if you know how limiting the playstyle is compared to hyper tapping and rolling past level 19, that's insane. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it! It was the result of a month-long grind. Each of these videos represents a session averaging several hours and good enough to land him in the 13th spot on the all-time leaderboard, a personal best for him. Better than any score he's done with tapping and more than 40,000 points above any DAS score from anyone else in the world. A truly incredible achievement. Sidnev isn't that far behind though. He's originally famous for getting his first max out during CTWC 2020 qualifiers, satisfying enough for him to be the only player to quit his qualifiers 
qualifying session early, and has been on a meteoric rise since, recently getting a 1.3 million score to move him into the top 20 on the leaderboard. At the end of game one, Sidnev is in control with a two Tetris score lead and three Tetris pace lead. Tristop only has two Tetrises left before 29. This is now insurmountable without kill screen play. Sidnev gets a double, looking to coast to the finish. Tristop takes a single, gets a Tetris, has zero lines left to burn, and Sidnev is just trying to get in position for a final Tetris, but cannot resolve the top of his stack and get it clean. Tristop is Tetris ready now, gets his final Tetris into 29, and Sidnev might be setting up a dirty Tetris, but hangs an L in the center and tops out. Suddenly Tristop's only a few thousand points back with a few burns he could take it, but a hang on the right seals it. Tristop tops out. In a game much closer than anyone expected, Sidnev, I think, is convinced he blew it, just staring into the camera waiting for the internet connection delay to tell him what happened to Tristop, and now he knows he's won. Great moment for Sidnev, and this game actually ended up making the difference. Sidnev won the set with a decider in game five to advance to the semifinals. As for the highlight of the semis, there was a pretty good match between Jerpa Dude and Miles the Great. Jerpa Dude, of course, is a previous Masters event finalist. And on the other side is Miles the Great, perhaps best known for breaking what appears to be a 12-year-old record on the Twin Galaxies NES Tetris leaderboard in April because nobody had submitted anything for nearly a decade. His 297-line run beat Ben Mullen's mark of 296, sending shockwaves throughout the Twin Galaxies community. Who the hell is Miles Miller? I've never heard of that guy before. Ben Mullen I've heard of, Buko I've heard of, Harry Hong, like, I mean, but who the f*** is Miles Miller? In game one, commentators Van Dweller and Kibbybyte were talking about alternative names they could use for the tournament, in case there were ever any copyright issues with the name Classic Tetris Monthly. Let's replace Tetris with stacking, CSM, there you go. Yeah, CSM or CBM, Classic Block, CBSM. <laughs> yeah, Classic BS Monthly, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, Classic BS Monthly. <laughs> I swear, if, they, if that ever becomes an issue, I will change it to Classic BS Monthly. The commentary even got Miles to laugh hard enough that he had a slight misdrop, which he was able to quickly recover from. Shortly after the transition, Jerpa Dude got in a perilous position, but he was able to survive several levels and eventually burn down. At the end of game one, Miles is clinging to a small lead, but Jerpa Dude is the one with the clean stack. Miles gets a nice skimming double, and Jerpa Dude is high, but gets the Tetris for the lead and another Tetris to knock it all the way down. Miles doesn't have enough of a pace lead to be able to burn down. He's just gonna go for dirty Tetrises at this point. Jerpa Dude has one Tetris available before 29, and there it is. Miles is Tetris ready, but hangs a long bar and gets another long bar 12 high right for the Tetris to stay alive. But Jerpa Dude is now more than a Tetris and a half ahead, and after a few lines added on 29, he raises his hands in celebration. Miles incredibly is cleaned up at the top of his stack, is Tetris ready, but would need some additional kill screen play to win. Waiting for the long bar, and the long bar doesn't come. Jerpa Dude wins game one one and there's his reaction and he would go on to advance to the finals where he would face the perpetual contender Zefania Nanu. Every road to the finals is tough, but Nenu's was especially tough this month, having to face off against Cheese in the quarterfinals. In the finals versus Jerpa Dude in game three, they're tied with one game apiece. Nenu has a one Tetris score lead, but Jerpa Dude has a one Tetris pace lead. Nenu is gonna take a skim and bang down another Tetris for a two Tetris lead, but he's nearly at level 29. Jerpy's got a perfect stat going, but it's getting up high, so he takes a safety double, still holding out for long bar ops for another safety double, and Nenu gets his final Tetris, so Jerpa Dude is clinging to a tiny fraction of a Tetris pace lead, needs two Tetrises, and trying to avoid long bar dependencies, he ends up waiting on something to fill out the L dependency. Jerby makes a last second adjustment to avoid the long bar dependency, but gets a long bar right afterwards. None of these pieces are working out anymore, and he only has one Tetris available now. Setting up more delayed burns, trying now to get it clear so he can maybe get a dirty Tetris, but ends up burning into the kill screen. Falling a Tetris and a half short, and Nenu breathes a sigh of relief. Nenu would go on to win the set for his second ever Classic Tetris Monthly Master event victory, and it set a new record that is perhaps more impressive than it initially seems, the longest gap between CTM victories of all time. The reason I find this so impressive is that the last time Nenu won CTM way back in 2019, the field of 15 other players was entirely different. Nenu was not only one of the best players in the world back when the scene was much smaller, he's managed to maintain his status as one of the best players in the world during the biggest period of rapid growth in the scene's history. And as always, I talked to him and Jerpa Dude for the finalist interviews. Thanks so much for coming on. So you had a pretty crazy road to victory this month. 
What was it like facing Cheese in his match after his crazy games versus Huff? Uh, I mean, you just witness the craziest, the clutchest chase down in the screen, right? I mean, it did affect me. You must be affected by that, yeah. But I just played my own game and trying to at least get 600k transition every game and yeah, hope for the best. Yeah, it worked. So you've been an incredibly consistent player. Is there anything that you think has helped you with your consistency? Uh, with my consistency, I think you just need to be in the right mindset for competition. Sometimes if you face a good player, you can you can just double well, double well every on whole post runs and pre runs, right? Just make sure you can always burn on the right side. I think it's hard to find the balance between trying not to top out and keeping the aggression. I still have room to improve on that part, I think. So out of all the CTM winners that have won multiple times, you've had the longest gap between your two victories. What has been like the biggest motivating factor for you to keep on competing every single month? Uh, I just... I don't know. I just play to play the game competitively and I think it's more fun to play that way than like you green for high score on your own room. I think it's just the fun game. So do you have any future goals left that you'd hope to accomplish in NES Tetris? Uh, goals? Uh, maybe like 1.4. I think I'm capable of doing that someday, somehow. If I manage to learn how to play in kill screen, or maybe CTWC 2021 title, it will be good too. But I know it's tall order for me because the scene is really strong now. But yeah, we'll see. Well, thank you so much again for coming on and best of luck in the future months. Thank you again for having me. So welcome back, Chirpy Dude, making it all the way to the finals to the CTM Masters event. Again, it wasn't an easy road. You had to fight your way through some tough opponents. Did you have a favorite match from this tournament? Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing against Miles. Every game in that match was really high scoring and there was always at least like one max out or close. I've played Miles before, but this time he just played better, and that's the best I've seen him play. In game one, you had a insane dig after the transition. Are there any key strategies you have in situations like that to survive? Yeah, uh, when you're that high up, there's only a few pieces that can get to the left, so a lot of times there's just one piece that can get you out of that situation. So the best thing you can do is just stall and hope that you can get the right piece. You need to be confident with every piece he plays because you don't really have much time to regret your decisions or change your mind. And then there was one game where you had somebody sticking something on your head. Was that a sibling or something? Yeah, that was my sister. Uh, she thought it'd be funny to <laughs> put these ears on my head. Um, <laughs> yeah, we had the whole family watching and they were all waiting for me to finish the match so we can get dinner afterwards, but ended up taking longer than they expected. So you just recently got your first max out with rolling. As one of the first players to get good at rolling after cheese, how has your progress been? And how long do you think it might be until it's viable for you to play you know, it in competition? Yeah, progress has been pretty good recently. Um, starting off, it was kind of slow, especially since I'm the only one sort of using my grip, but once I got the hang of it and had everything figured out, I've been improving pretty quickly. I think I can have rolling viable in competition by CTWC, and I hope I'll be able to use that by then. That'd be awesome to see. Well, I'll look forward to seeing you competing in the future months. You always are a fantastic competitor, and thanks for coming on for an interview. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Thank you for having me on. Like last month, I was able to pass on the equivalent of the June prize pool to Zafanya Nenu and Jerpadu thanks to a generous sponsor. Although they're not quite ready to have their spot air, so that'll be in an upcoming video. And a quick reminder, if you haven't already heard about it, the CTWC South Carolina Qualifier is happening in person this Saturday, July 10th. And I'm gonna be there. It should be an amazing event, so be sure to tune in on the Classic Tetris Twitch stream to see what goes down. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then.